Testing one, two, three. This will be the September 16, 2015 City Council meeting. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach, September 16, 2015, approximately 7 p.m. Please join Councilman Ozma for a moment of silence and a pledge. Please join me in a moment of silence, please. In the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll step down to the floor to make a uh, presentation of two proclamations. This is a great young lady. I know who's made her parents very proud and made the city extremely proud. And we appreciate everything she's done. I'd like to read this proclamation from the city to you. Whereas, Kara Kachura is a responsible, caring young lady who is a role model for all dedicated citizens who work to improve the lives of others. She is a student at Satellite High School with a 3.9 or GPA and a member of the Sally High School National Honor Society, Beta Club, and Student Government. And as a member of the Satellite Beach Police Athletic League, Kara has served on the Board of Directors for two years. She has also served on the PAL Region 3 Youth Advisory Council for two years. And some of Kara's outstanding accomplishments as a role model include being a member of the Florida PAL Youth Conference Committee for three years, being named conference co-chair this year, and representing Satellite Beach PAL at the State PAL Conference in Orlando. And Kara can be described as someone who consistently goes above and beyond what is expected, amazing over 800 hours of volunteer for PAL, candlelight as a bar, not on my watch team safe driving program, the Bard County Hunger Project, and Kids Without Christmas. And Kara has earned statewide recognition as an extraordinary teenager taking in initiatives to make our community a better place in which to live and constantly leading by example. Kara takes the initiative to get things done and will pool all her resources to get the job complete. Give her a task and you'll never have to look back. You know it has been completed, usually far beyond the expectation. Now, therefore, we, the City Council of Satellite Beach, do hereby recognize and commend you, Eric Kachura, as the Police Athletic League Woman of the Year 2015. And thank you for your dedication, work ethic, and willingness to help anyone in need. Thank you so very much. Thank you. sleepovers and I've seen her interact with other people and I've seen her when they're running around the house talking 
And not only is she outstanding in community, but she is just an outstanding kid. She's just a good person. She's a young woman who has done great things and will do great things, but she's just a good person. She's got a great family who not only teach her right from wrong and give her the things that she needs, love and all those things, but they hold her accountable. And that is what has helped her become who she is. And they're outstanding people, and what they've done is, is nothing short of amazing. And I just want to say that from a different perspective, all of the things that she's being recognized for, there's even a lot more of that that make her even more special. So I have something that I'd just like to give you. <clears throat> it says, Kira Priyachura, 2015 State of Florida Calvary over here, in recognition of your outstanding achievement from everybody at the police department, which are attached. Thank you. Thank you. With hair in the back? <laughs> it takes one to know one. <laughs> I remember when PAL first started, and uh, it's an amazing program. So Monday night, we're at the Florida League of Cities, and I'm standing there, and I feel these two arms wrap around me. And I looked around that I thought I would see someone of normal size. And I looked up, and about six foot five later is this young kid that was on my Little League team who grew up here, Nick Abraham and his brothers, who started out in PAL from a single family mom who raised four boys in town. So PAL's a fabulous thing. It's done great for our city. And thank you, Paul, for everything you put into it. Thank you very much. Okay. Welcome, Julie. Julie is with EDC. She lives in our town now. Unfortunately, she lives next to the guy who makes some smart comments there. So, yeah. This is an official proclamation concerning Manufacturing Month in Bavar. And if you ever have the opportunity to look and see what's manufactured in Bavar County, you would be stunned. There is just an incredible amount of businesses around here, Melbourne, Titusville. I think you would be very surprised what we have here. So this is an official proclamation of the city of Satellite Beach. Whereas Made in Bar is a joint program of the Economic Development Commission of Florida Space Coast, the EDC, Cocoa Beach Regional Chamber of Commerce, Melbourne Regional Chamber of East Central Florida, the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce and Titusville Area Chamber of Commerce. And Maiden Bavard is focused on promoting and celebrating companies that manufacture products in Bavard County, Florida, and changing the perception of manufacturing careers throughout the EDC Talent Assess Pipeline, which has the initials of TAP, T-A-P, for manufacturing programs and made before and tap for manufacturing programs to see educated manufacturers raise, raise awareness about manufacturing careers, enabling platforms for certified skill development and enhancing manufacturing job placements. And manufacturing is the economic driver of strong communities with over 500 manufacturers in Bar County, Florida. It is only natural to raise awareness for this fundamental industry. Whereas Manufacturing Day is a national grassroots movement occurring on the first Friday of October annually, and the state of Florida recognizes the month of October as Manufacturing Month as an effective way to expand knowledge about the value of manufacturing brings to Florida's economy, economics and to showcase the high skill, high paid manufacturing jobs needed by the industry. And during Manufacturers Day and Manufacturing Month, U.S. manufacturers open their doors to showcase modern manufacturing and fostering interest in 
manufacturing careers. And whereas Megan Bavard, through the EDC, Industrial Council, and the TAP for Manufacturing Program, is encouraging Satellite Beach manufacturer organizations and schools to participate in manufacturers, excuse me, manufacturing day. Now, therefore, I, Frank Catino, Mayor of the City of Satellite Beach, Bavard County, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 2015 as Manufacturers Month in Bavard. So, thank you very much. If you haven't, the EDC is very interesting, what I've learned going to it, with all the jobs that are coming here and how the schools are starting to participate in training kids for these skilled jobs that are going to be available to them here. Pretty interesting. I just want to say thank you, and he's right. So a lot of the companies that we work with are manufacturers, and there's really a, a big need right now to get um, – kids like yourself to get interested in manufacturing careers because it used to not be that interesting of a job but now it's become more high tech and you really have a career path to uh, make really good money in those fields so we're really trying to promote that and if uh, you're interested or if there's anybody else interested in satellite beach um, of touring a manufacturer uh, in the area it doesn't have to be a satellite beach anywhere we have plenty of them just let me know and I'd be happy to set that up thank you very much Okay, moving on to agenda item four is citizens' comments. This is for non-agenda item, uh, and the floor is open. Non-agenda items. Hey, Brian, citizen. Uh, haven't been here for a while. Dave, turn that microphone to you like this, please. Thank you. I hit a couple of bumps in a row, so didn't get to come for a while. Uh, one of the things, first thing I want to address is the beachcaster. What a phenomenal job. What a great job. Um, we finally let our citizens know what each department does and the extraordinary job they do. And I'm going to keep reminding you for years to come, I hope, that extraordinary performances deserve extraordinary rewards. Um, I must mention um, Melanie Drake from the fire department. What a phenomenal individual. My wife wants to adopt her. Uh, she does a great job as our EMT. Uh, at any rate, uh, that's one of the things I want to discuss. Another one is that the outpouring of compassion from uh, City Hall, from many of my friends, is definitely appreciated, especially from your busy schedule. Um, one of the things I noticed and I don't know how we can accomplish this, is how can the citizens thank you all for volunteering? I know you draw such exorbitant salaries. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I don't know I don't know how to go about that, but I want to thank you all for all the volunteers. And a lot of you have been up there for years and years and years, and we thank you. And Steve, I hope you're going to be up there for years and years and years. Uh, I know everybody's in a hurry to rush back home and watch the debates. Good luck. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Gabe, and thank you for all you've done for us in the city for all the years. The floor is still open for citizens' comments on non-agenda items. Hearing none, back to council. Uh, city council comments? I have none. Uh, again, I just want to echo Gabe's comments on the Beachcaster. Nice job, and Marty, nice job. Thank you for thank you for everything. It was really a, very well done, as usual. Very well done. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I would just like to say to Gabe, the reason you've had such an outpouring 
of friendship and support is because you've earned it. Very true. Thank you. Sure. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is uh, Monday night was the uh, Space Coast League of Cities meeting, and several of us were there. In fact, all of us were there. And um, it was probably the best meeting we've had all year long as far as the speakers and as far as the things that were discussed. So, Lenora, thank you so much for putting all that together. I know as, uh, as treasurer of the league, you know, it, it was a great benefit to me because all the stuff that I got after the meeting was over was done the right way, and that's not always the case. So thank you for your help, and thanks for putting it all together, and Jennifer also for being there. Thank you, and Lorraine, thank you very much on the Beachcaster. Again, great. And, and I'll tell you, this Beachcaster, to me, was not only was it easy to read, but the layout of it and uh, the color of it was so consistent and really a fresh look, I think, for the Beachcaster. So, Lorraine and the staff, thank you. thought it was great. Any further council comments? Yeah. Okay. Here in none, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have actually several events in the city I wanted to make sure everyone knew about that we do have on September 19th, the Ocean Conservancy and Keeper of Our Beautiful um, will hold the, their Florida Coastal Cleanup event at Pelican Beach Park from 8 to noon. And as usual, they'll provide the trash and the bags and all that, so you just have to show up and, uh, and bring your water and, and help out. Um, on September 26th is the 13th annual Super Bunko. It's adults only. So, um, it, but it is sponsored by the PAL and um, it will benefit their youth program. So if you're interested in that, you can get tickets from the um, rec department or just show up at the door at um, six o'clock and you will also get dinner. And the, if you go to the door, it's $5 more. So it's either $20 or $25 at the door. Um, on September 26th, there's an event um, called Help Restore the Indian River Lagoon, and that is um, from 10 to 1, and it's a free uh, two-part program to help restore the Indian River Lagoon, and it's at the um, DRS Center. Um, basically, the Brevard um, Zoo staff and the Marine Resources Council will present programs that, for education and basically hands-on opportunities with the um, oyster map making and things like that. So that's a fun program, and if you're interested in that, you can also call um, our uh, rec department for that information. Um, and then also on October 3rd, the Long Doggers Kids Marathon and Half Marathon will be held, and this is for children. Um, and this is for kids 12 years and under. Parents can run with their children, um, and the, the marathon is 2.62 miles. Um, and then the half marathon is 1.31 miles, so it's, you know, for kids. Um, I will be there with my daughter, and I'm trying to get the mayor to go, since he's my other child, basically, um, to get him to, to participate in that with us. Um, and I would, I, would, I would ask Councilman Osmer to go, um, and I call him Councilman Osmer because nobody can say Steve or Dave with a straight face anymore. <laughs> But uh, so, so we're going to ask him to go, too, since he's also becoming my other second child. Um, <laughs> the, um, I did want to point out some things in my report with um, thank you notes. We got a wonderful thank you note from a family that was able to um, use the um, <coughs> beach wheelchair that was donated to the city, um, to, the fire, to, to the fire department. Um, for uh, by the Lions Club and that beach wheelchair if you read the letter um, really made an impact on the lives of that family and I think that it, it's a great it was a great thing for the Lions Club to do and and we do get use out of it and it's a good thing to point out um, and we, there's also a flyer in our um, in my report from the Friends of the Library and the Friends of the Satellite Beach Library had during the summer reading program um, 765 children participated in book bucks. They read for 7,776 hours this summer. 38 teens participated in the reading challenge and weekly events, and 50 teens volunteered 682 hours this summer at the library. And I just think that's phenomenal. I mean, those are huge numbers for our tiny little city. <laughs> so um, congratulations to them for, what, for a great project. Um, I did want to let you know that the Space Coast TPO is creating a Pathways project, um, which is basically going to be an interactive website, um, kind of like a um, 
a guide, really, an electronic guide for all of our sidewalks, walkways, bike paths, things like that throughout the county. So they are starting the partner meetings and workshops with the community to create that project, and that information is in, in my report. Um, we do have uh, Florida League of Cities Legislative Conference this year, and this is an action item, I'm sorry. Um, it is um, from November 19th to the 20th, and I needed to get council's permission to go ahead and start signing you all up for that and get you on board to go to attend that conference. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, authorize the city manager to um, make whatever arrangements for any councilman who wish to attend or councilwoman who wish to attend. I have a motion by Vice, Vice Mayor, excuse me, Montanero. Second. I have a second. Second by Councilman Brimer. Um, at this time, because it's an action item, action items will be open for public comment. So the podium is open for public comment on this item. Hearing none, back to Council. Council, um, just if you would get with Courtney mm -hmm. and um, okay. tell her if you can attend. Okay. Since there's a motion to second or consensus? Consensus. Oh, consensus, I think, yeah. is fine. Okay. Good. Good. That's yep, good. Thank you. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Any further comments or things for the city manager? Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 7, FY 2015-2016 budget. At this time, I'll open a public hearing on the proposed FY 2015-2016 budget. Jim, um, excuse me, no, Jim, Courtney. No, well, no, first A oh, is, this is the uh, first one. Yes. Okay. Oh, um, this, we have had no changes between the first and second reading, so except for the look of the budget, the um, format of it. Um, all of the content is exactly the same as you saw um, at the first reading. Um, we are reducing the city's millage rate from 8.3206 to 8.2900. Um, total revenue and expenditures for this year's budget is $16,778,378. Thank you. Um, comments from Council? Hearing none, I will open up for public comment on the, for the public hearing for the proposed FY 2015-16 budget. Hearing none, back to council. Um, I'd like to say one thing um, to Andy and you and your staff. Thank you on the work you guys done on the health care. We uh, had a meeting, Courtney and I, with Cocoa Beach Mayor and City Manager. And when we told them we were going partly insured, they were, some they said, Man, that's great. Everybody I have talked to on this in the medical field has said this is absolutely the best way to go. It's going to cost us no more to go this way, and we have the potential of bringing back money that's unused in it. And I think if you think about it from a business standpoint, most of the insurance companies, that's all they're doing. They have the formula. We're just taking the risk to make the money, and we can't spend more than we did than they proposed to us. So that's the worst we can make out in the deal. So I think it's a good way to start hedging health care. And uh, to the staff and Andy, thanks. Really helped in that in the last couple of years here. Any um, further discussion on Part A? Here and none. Um, move on to Part B, Ordinance Number 1109. Jim. Ordinance number 1109, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, adopting the final levying of ad valorem taxes by establishing an operating millage rate of 8.29 mills for fiscal year 2015-2016, providing an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 1109. Motion to approve ordinance number 1109 on second reading. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a motion by Councilman Brimer, second by Vice Mayor Montanero. Further discussion from... Council? Nope. Nope. Hearing none at this time, I'll open for public comment on Part B. Hearing none, back to Council. Any further discussion? Nope. One more? Councilman Goff? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Katina? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to 7C, Ordinance Number 11. 10, 
Jim. Ordinance number 1110, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, adopting FY 2015-2016 budget, providing an effective date. It's a second reading of ordinance number 1110. Motion to approve 1110 on second reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Brian, or second by Councilman Osmer, um, to adopt ordinance number 1110 on second reading. Um, I'll open up for public comment on portion C. Hearing none, back to council. Any council comments on Ordinance 1110? Yeah. I, I just want to echo your comments to Andy and, and Jennifer and Courtney and, and all the department heads. This, you know, this process that you have put in place that's now going on, you know, its third year has really, you know, defined how we do our budgets now. I mean, they were never as easy to look at. They were never as easy to understand. And, you know, the process now is, is so smooth in, in going through these. And uh, I appreciate you making it easier for us and you also making it easier for the residents of our city to be able to understand it. So, um, you know, it's a great thing. And, and as Frank said on the health care, that was one of our initiatives when we all pretty much came back on council was to address health care issues. And, and, and here we are. We finally made it. So thank you. Thank you. Any further comment? Here on the Lenore? Council McGaugh? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes, motion passes. Staff, thank you very much for all the work this year. Um, at this time, I'll close the public hearing and move on to agenda item eight discuss, take action on ordinance number 1111. Jim? Ordinance number 1111, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending the Satellite Beach Personnel Policy Section 12.01, job classification levels to add job classification, deputy recreation directory, director, and salary range, to add job classification for comptroller and salary range, and providing an effective date. So first reading of ordinance number 1111. Thank you. I have a motion. Move to adopt Ordinance 1111 on first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Gott, second by Councilman Brimer. Uh, questions from Council? Sir? Hearing none, open up discussion on Agenda Item 8, Ordinance 1111. Hearing none, back to Council. Any further discussion? I just wanted to make sure the residents knew that um, the the comptroller position is here already. Jennifer, raise your hand. <laughs> She's right there. We did, this is a cleanup, so we're not adding a position to the budget or anything like that. Um, and the position of the deputy um, recreation director is actually, uh, Cassie will be filling that position. Cassie, raise your hand. <laughs> um, and what we're trying to do is train her to follow Carrie Stom's footsteps because she's threatening to retire in May of 2016. Um, and so we need to make sure that, you know, we have a good smooth transition there. So once that happens, there will not be another deputy recreation director. It's only for that temporary part. So we're not adding another position to the budget. So I just wanted to make sure the residents knew that. Thank you. For the discussion? Lenore? Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Dodd? Yes. Mayor Fatino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to <coughs> agenda item nine, discuss take action on ad hoc green committee sustainability action plan. Courtney. Thank you. I have two of my esteemed uh, committee members here tonight. Our chair, Jeff Chastine, raise your hand. <laughs> we got a lot of hand raising tonight. And uh, David v Vigilotti, did I got that? Um, and. Uh, I'm going to present this, but um, they are the ones that did all the work. Basically, we just kind of wrote up their ideas, or, or the interns did, actually. Um, but basically, they're um, in their short – is John Fergus here, too? Dr. Fergus is back there, too. I'm sorry. Um, um, he's our vice chair. and uh, um, But they've done a, a lot of work. Um, they're probably the hardest working board um, I've ever seen. And they've met quite frequently in the last three months to come up with this action plan. And there, um, you know, as we started this process, we were concerned that we might not have the, the momentum and the um, participation. So we wanted to make it an ad hoc committee to see how it went. 
Um, it went pretty famously. We have a full board. We have um, an interest, even an interested um, member or, or um, a person who wants to be a member, but since he's not a registered voter, um, can't actually vote, but he's still willing to sit on the dais and be a liaison. That's how interested um, he is in the committee. So we have a real good uh, momentum going, and we'd like to, the first thing we'd like to do is create a permanent board. Um, so the, the, the committee met um, to discuss that. Um, since all of our um, boards in the city, our volunteer boards are called boards, they have recommended to change the name to Sustainability Board, um, which I think is a, a, a good uh, encompassing name that kind of really um, describes their goals. And when you look through their action plan, um, their, their actions um, are centered out creating a long-term sustainability plan. So really delving into doing an assessment, um, looking at where we are at in terms of energy use, um, transportation, all of the things that would encompass sustainability and, and then look at future goals. Um, so this is, that's really, that planning process can really take up to a year, even two sometimes. Um, so they recommend doing that. And part of that recommendation would be bringing that back to you as a, um, uh, with a budget to hire some interns from FIT to do that initial assessment. Um, and I've already been in discussions with FIT. They're very excited about that possibility. Um, so we will bring that back to you if this is an idea that you would, would like to proceed. Um, they would also like to implement some short-term initiatives um, that they think they can get off the ground. And short-term, I mean that they can start that now. Um, it may be an initiative that lasts forever, and it may, be a, it may take a long time to get the initiative off the ground, but it's still considered something they can do that today. Um, and they want to start out with landscaping and lawns. That's a big thing they all have. Most of our board members have very, a lot of experience in xeriscaping. Um, you know, David, um, member of Vigilati, <laughs> um, is um, an, pretty much an expert in um, you know, edibles, plants, and things like that. So all of our committee members have that degree of expertise, and I think um, uh, Dr. Fergus actually has a certified Florida-friendly lawn, so they all have that experience and processes. And, um, and our chair had, had come up with an idea to create a, um, what Del the community of, um, in Delaware, they have a, a program called Livable Lawns, which um, kind of promotes the idea of a sustainable lawn care system. Um, and then also, they also wanted to pursue the idea of lose your lawns, which would be like promoting zero escape and things like that. Um, the other item that they were looking at is um, creating a community garden and composting area. Um, and that was an idea also from that one of our um, community redevelopment advisory board members had too as well. So I think we have some interest in that. Um, and then also they wanted to really start promoting sustainability through green events, um, participating in existing events and bringing the green aspect to those events. And then the electrical vehicle charging stations. Um, so they're such a hardworking board, they already have an agenda item as your next item to talk about that. They also wanted to look at reusable, a reusable bag partnership with the Surf Rider Foundation, and I'm pretty sure you've probably heard of the Melbourne Beach Initiative. Um, so they would like to replicate that here in our city. Um, and we also have, we already have some interested donors um, who would like to participate in, in providing some um, funds towards that end. Um, so, so that's really where they'd like to start. And um, with your <laughs> approval, they would um, like to become a permanent board, and then they would like to get started on bringing their initiatives to you for approval. Thank you. I've sat in on a couple of meetings, and they're, it's great. I mean, participation is great. The people and the committees are very anxious to get things done. I think it would be great. And it's way too much work not to be a board. So. Move um, to accept the Green Committee's Sustainability Action Plan and make the Green Committee a permanent board to be named the Sustainability Board. Second. second. I have a motion by Councilman God, second by Councilman Brimer. Um, further discussion? We need a liaison to the board, too. Um, Dylan um, Hansen is the is the member. He's already put his application in. He interviewed right. with you all, um, but he was not a registered voter, so um, okay. he would like to be appointed as a liaison member, if that's a possibility. Right. Okay. And then council, council liaison. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm sorry, the council yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you were I, I would, I'd do I would be, be, yeah. you do it? Well, I'm on one board. Okay. okay. So far, figured. Is anybody else only on That's one? Fine. No. Okay. What did you say? I said the, she wants a council liaison. I, I have one board, so I didn't want to bog down other people with more than. Who's it going to be? Okay. Um, at this time, I'll open up for public comment on this agenda item. Hearing none, back to council. Any further discussion? I, I just like to say, I think it's a, uh, I like the idea. And I think one of the other <clears throat> aspects of making it permanent is that way when we have citizens who have ideas or thoughts or want information or whatever, we have a, a central place to point them to. I mean, I'm sure there's always other than just people on the board that say, you know, hey, what about this or how can I do this? Or like you said, if you want to talk about a lawn or thing like that, at least now we'd have a place to direct those people, say, hey, we actually have a group, we have a board, this is when they meet, you can go there, you can ask them your questions or throw out your ideas or whatever, which I think is good because currently right now, if you think about it, they're, they're going to come to city staff or try to hit some of the other boards like Samson Island or Beautification Board or something like that. But this would actually be nice. We'd have a central you know, clearinghouse, for lack of a better word, to send people that direction to either pass on information or get information. And the way I look at it is because of the expertise that you guys have, there's a great knowledge base there where we could point citizens your way who want to do some of these things and say, if you go talk to them, they could set you up. So I, I think it is a, a good idea. And because it's permanent, we have a long-term place to keep sending residents to to get the information to keep this going. So I, I really like the idea of it being permanent. Um, nothing at the League of Cities the other night. I mentioned this to a gentleman, and he's very interested in coming to speak with you, so I'll give his name, Dwayne DeFries. Dr. DeFries, he's the National Estuary Program, and just appointed. He's the and, executive director. Yeah, executive director, and he's when it's at FIT for a while in a way, but he's very interested in getting with you guys, so just to throw that out there. Mayor, I failed to mention that they're famous now because they're in the news. Um, the Green Committee was mentioned on News 13. Um, and, of course, the Green Committee is also guiding all of our resiliency efforts. Um, so, in, you know, anytime you say climate change, it makes the news. <laughs> um, but they, that's how it kind of the, the way they couched it, even though obviously the board is much broader than just climate change. Um, but they did um, get a, a nice positive article um, in, in coverage on News 13, so I thought that was nice. We put that through Facebook, too, and we're getting nice comments that, about that. I, I saw that part in Facebook where actually what a student from Satellite High actually said, I, I have some ideas and I want some information, and mm -hmm. they were happy to hear that, which is exactly my point I was making. Yeah. We now have a place to point people, which mm -hmm. is a good thing. I saw, I saw the, uh, the Channel 13 little um, segment today, uh, this afternoon it was on. You know, a lot of the things that, you know, that this committee is, is looking at are things that have been going on in our city for a long time as far as the zero escaping, because people have been doing that. Um, you know, it's great that we're going to be able to work with the surf riders and anglers for conservation who are the um, people that are putting on the Ocean Reef Beach Festival. And, uh, you know, Mike um, with the surf riders is really interested in the bag. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's the one that, that pushed that down in Melbourne Beach. So, you know, Mike Daniels is going to be a, a great asset to us um, on this also. So I think this is just a wonderful opportunity, and it's something that, you know, it's time is here. Yeah. And I would just uh, like to say thank you to the bo new board members. And uh, the mission uh, that you all have undertaken is an important one, and it's very gratifying to see the enthusiasm that you all are bringing to this board. And uh, so I appreciate it. One, one more thing I just wanted to ask. Are you going to come back to us with the how the board is going to be made up? I mean, how many members we're going to have on it? I mean, we, before we... I mean, we're going to approve a board, but we have to have, don't we have to have a makeup of the board? Yes, we have to do all of that, and it has to be done by ordinance to be incorporated into the handbook. Okay. Right. So that we can do that at the next meeting? Yeah, we can have that all prepared by the next meeting. Okay, yeah. great. And then at that point, we would like you also to appoint the liaison, but not the council liaison, but the environmental liaison. Sure. Yeah.
And Councilman Gott, I'm sure you'll update the um, hands Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Nope. Lenore? You didn't ask for public comment, sir. Oh, sorry. Um, public comment is now open for agenda item nine. Here and on back to council. Thank you. One more. Uh, Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Bryan? Yes. Councilman Goff? Yes. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Moving on to agenda item 10. Discuss, take action on electrical <clears throat> vehicle charging station at Pelican Beach Park. Alan, are you leaving? Thank you. Good evening. Um, we might have missed um, the um, when we're going over all the events happening this week. On uh, September 19th, the there's an electric vehicle um, awareness day. I, I, I think that's what they call it, an electric car show. Um, anyway, during those discussions, as I put in the uh, agenda item, um, during those discussions, it was we talked to some of the electric vehicle drivers and they were talking about how few um, charging stations there are along the beach side here and, and basically there aren't any. Um, so we thought, you know, where would be the most opportune place to put uh, a charging station and, and what would the cost be and, and how difficult would it be to to, to implement a, a charging station and um, myself, John Stone, and uh, John Fergus, who's a Green Committee member, uh, Green Board member uh, now, um, we talked to the drivers of the electric vehicles, picked their brain a little bit to find out, you know, what, what companies are out there that are selling these. I, I did a lot of research on the internet, a lot of you know, a lot of West Coast companies are out there, and not so many East Coast, but we did find a couple, um, and we researched those. We had them come out, give us some demonstrations, show us the units, um, go over pricing, warranty information, durability issues. Um, we vetted them out pretty good, I think. And um, so our recommendation is to um, actually put one up at Pelican Beach Park, you know, the popularity of the park and, you know, folks go there, they, they spend more than 10 minutes at the beach. They go up there for an hour, an hour or two, and in that time they can charge their vehicle and spend some time at the beach and go on their merry way. Uh, so, and we have the electrical out there, so it won't, it won't be that difficult to, to pull the necessary um, power out there that, that's needed for this, this station. Uh, looked into the durability issue, as I said, and they have um, charging stations all along the beach in, in South uh, Florida, Miami area, Fort Lauderdale. Um, and they, they work fine, they work well, they hold up well. Um, and the company that we are recommending um, is giving, basically giving us a five year warranty for, for nothing. Um, it's a special deal they have going on, they had going on August and September. And uh, plus their service for five years is also free. So um, what we're doing, what the, the cost of the electric for us up there is about 11 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, it would be charging for these. So we recommend probably charging about 15, 16 cents uh, per kilowatt hour. Uh, the way they do it, they slide a card. It, it goes in to your car, and when you're done, it charges that card, and that company will send us a check at the end of the month for however many kilowatt hours are used. So it's a pretty simple process. I think it's a, it's a winner for the residents. Um, I think it's a winner for the city. The, you know, Satellite Beach <coughs> has always been a leader when it comes to doing new things, and I think this is one of those things that is just going to keep growing. And if we find that it's successful, maybe, you know, we think about putting one down at the Schechter Center or, or someplace else in the city that's convenient for, you know, folks that are going to be in a certain area at a certain, for, for a certain length of time. 
Um, so that would be my recommendation for uh, the SEMA Connect company. Uh, they were um, much, their, their unit is, is much less than the Nova Charge. And like I said, we're getting a, a five year warranty uh, and the service uh, thrown in to the deal for the, uh, the amount of $4,091. Thank you. Questions from council? Yeah. Alan, the one thing I had, and I, I think you kind of hit on it, was the durability aspect. So these things are not going to be rusted out at the end of six months and you got to replace the whole thing, right? Right, yeah. Um, I've seen like, down on the beach and other places, and they look like they'd hold up okay, but I don't know how long they've been there. Yeah, they're, they're made of powder-coated powder aluminum, Okay. and the aluminum does pit after a while, and that was one of my issues, concerns. Um, but they told us that if you have any problems with them, it doesn't matter what it is, you take that unit out, they'll send you a new unit, you send that one back for five years. You know, and after that, of course, then we'd have to renew our, our warranty. But, um, you know, that's that's the uh, thing in a nutshell. Okay, yeah, that's all I got. Right. Question. Are we charging for this? Yes. I thought we weren't. For well, it... The 15, well, that would have been my recommendation. And the city manager, if, if she doesn't want to charge, Melbourne has one that they charge 15 cents a kilowatt hour for it. Everybody in the, that uses these, these systems, all of the, the drivers, they all pay for the, um, for the, for the use of the electrical. So, I mean, that, that would be a rec that would be my recommendation, but that is totally up to, up to you is, all. Is this like a credit card thing? You yes, it credit is. Card in and yes, it so is. There would be the, uh, the company would be the collector of the funds. The company would be the collector of the funds. And they would be charged a percent and a half or two percent for a credit card fee? No. And they would pay, well, no, what I'm saying is oh. somebody's going to swipe a card, somebody's getting paid. 2% or whatever the deal would be, I would think. Is that their responsibility? Um, and then they would send us whatever our agreement was, 20% of a profit or 90% of the profit. Is that how? The way or is it us ourselves, Alan, that we're in charge of the credit card um, the, operation? The way it works is with the SEMA Connect unit, there is, we pay a, they um, deferred the monthly service fee for this, this one opportunity. It's $20, I believe it was $20 a month for the service. That's been waived for the five year period. That would have been our charge for them to handle the service. So if we pay $20 a month, they do all of the, they scan the card. When this card is scanned, it's sent directly to them. They give you a, a spreadsheet of how many vehicles were there, how many, how many charges, um, how much electricity was used, and then they cut you a check, or the city, they cut the city a check for those, that amount of hours used. So times 15 cents an hour. And that is a $20 fee, but that $20 a month fee has been waived, like I said, for five years. So there is no credit card fee, even though they're using a credit card? No, because those credit cards are used in other places where they do collect fees. And they will eventually collect a fee from us of $20 once that, that initial period is, goes away. <coughs> Well, I think what he's saying is they're, eat, they're eating the credit card fee, they're but, but the eventually that, that fee is going to come back to us as a $20 a month charge <clears throat> globally, I think, is what, is what you're yes. saying, right? Yeah. It, it's just going to be a catch-all fee of $20 at some point down the road. All right. It just, okay. Is this a one-vehicle spot? Yes, or one, one vehicle. Or two? No, we can go to two, but this particular unit, the $4,000 unit, is a, is a one-unit um, charger. And we thought best to go with that to see how how it worked out. You know, you don't want to get a, pay for a two two vehicle charger if you're not getting use out of it. The other the other question I had is, um, I have been to places where there have been electronic charging stations there in other parts of the state, and there were cars parked there, 
that were not electric cars. <laughs> How do we handle that? Because if, if that's something where we have to, I mean, do we have a sign there that says we will tow your vehicle? Because that's a popular place, and the last thing we want is to install this there and not have someone be able to access it for the purpose intended. And then the other question is, I bring my electric car there, and I park it, and I charge, and it's there all day because I'm at the beach. How do we, I mean, how do we handle something like that? Well, the first question is that, yes, there's signage, and I, I spoke to the users and the, of the manufacturers, and they have signs, and the users, because there are so few at this point, they basically, they're a group amongst, uh, uh, they know the etiquette. So these cars now, they, they text you and let you know that they're fully charged and they'll, pe people go move their cars. If they don't, then you'll get a, um, wasn't it John, there was a, a, a fee added on to the, to the, um, the bill. Go ahead, Dan. Alan, would you bring your mic up in front of your mouth? Okay. Thank you. Let me try to straighten out some stuff here. We had two proposals. They're both in your package. The company we did not choose to get that off the table first. Number one, it cost twice as much more for the same full deal five years. Number two, they skin 10% off the top. Okay, this company, no skinning, no nothing. Okay, the other point, this is not a credit card. It's one of your little radio frequency cards that you kind of hold it near it. So it isn't like your normal credit card. But that's not the only way you pay. You can walk in with your mobile device, your tablet, your cell phone, whatever it is, and you go through the internet and do it. Or they have an, a, it's through an app on your, uh, on your device. The other way is to actually take it, like your cell phone, and call an 800 number and say, I'm at this machine, da 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 da, and they will enable it. Okay. Uh, the mechanics, we can set, the user can set the fee schedule any way they want. You can set it at zero. Now, Melbourne did that when they started, the one over at the other gal library. They said the public was not too happy when they started to charge. Okay, so that's one reason that we kind of suggested you start with something, at least cover the electricity, my goodness. Uh, but you can do it any way you want. We've actually talked about the idea, and apparently it is done in some places, that you get charged 11 cents per kilowatt hour, or 12, or whatever you want to charge. When the car is charged up, the car contacts the owner's mobile device and says, I'm full. So the owner knows to come and disconnect and move the car. Now, if you want to, and some folks apparently do this, you can make the rate structure that, let's say, it, it gives you 15 cents a kilowatt hour. And then it pings, and the system knows that the car is charged. And it waits. You can tell it 20 minutes, 30 minutes, a courtesy period. And if that thing is not disconnected, then we can say charge a dollar an hour, charge five dollars an hour. That's an incentive for the person to move the car. Now, there's not much we can do with the device itself as far as somebody with a normal car taking the slot. But you can put a sign. The ordinance could, I mean, the city could, if they want, I'm sure, pass some kind of an ordinance that says, in accordance with ordinance so-and-so, one of our friendly police officers may come in and uh, ticket you. I believe there's a state law that's been passed in that, in that vein that if 
you you can ticket vehicles that are not electric vehicles parked in electric vehicle spots, much like a handicapped spot. I, I think you're right. I think I've seen that, and what it says is car has to be under charge. It's the slot is for car under charge. So it's got to be plugged in and charging to be parked there. Right. Yeah. If it's not under charge, it can be ticketed or towed. Yeah. And, and so, okay, go ahead. Question. This card that they would have, whether it's a credit card or whatever we're going to call that, where do you get the code? Do they come to the rec center? And no, 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 no. They buy it through the company. Or they the vendor it. takes care of all of okay, that So detail. the vendor yeah. we're getting this unit from is taking care of that? Yeah, yes. well, they, the, the EV drivers themselves, they have, and um, Josh, one of, the, one of the EV drivers, showed us. He has like four or five different types of cards because there's different type charging stations. Okay. So they get it through the, the these companies and they don't charge them for the card because they know they're going to make their money on the Kind of like having charge. an Exxon card or a mobile card okay. or a, you yeah. know, Sitco card. So they, when you're in the electric vehicle world, you know how to get and access all that. So. And it hasn't been addressed, but there are three types of chargers, charging stations. There's a level one, which is no different than any 110 outlet like sitting out here, right here. Okay? That's not of any real use, because it'll take hours to charge battery, many hours, overnight. The level two, which is what we're getting, is the one that essentially all the different electric vehicles can use. There's a standard, you know, just like the 110 plug is this, just like your dryer plug is a certain design, your stove plug's a different, a special design. The electric cars, it now has a standard design. There is also a level three. This is the one that the big boys use, one of the Nissans. Tesla. And Tesla, okay? But, of course, now Tesla goes 200 miles on a charge. And so that really sucks the power. But one of those level threes costs fifteen, sixteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And the other problem is they're not backward compatible. In other words, I pull up in my little Nissan Leaf, my plug doesn't fit. It's like trying to plug in, you plug in your 110 hair dryer into your dryer out, uh, electric outlet, it doesn't work. And so, like the port, that was one of the things he said, the port went and put in these chargers. They're level three chargers. Okay, so it doesn't, but if I own a Tesla, I can buy a little stub cable that I can use to adapt, okay? So the level two's the one we want, that's what we're buying. And I just want to make sure everybody understood that the, this is the standard for the Thank you, John. Uh, any other questions? Or? My question on the number two, what, do we have power there to make a two, a two work? Yes. Okay. And we have, he, we went down, that's one of the things we checked down there, and he, I, as, as I recall, there's enough circuits and capacity. We could put in two of these if we wanted to. Now, that was another thing with the other vendor. You could put in a dual charging station and would only it would run off of one of these 40 amp circuits. But the problem was when, when two people plugged in, they each got half as much power. Okay, and so that's not a good idea. This company won't sell that way. You need a 40 amp circuit. And for the level three, you need a 100 amp circuit. I mean, there are houses that don't have 100 amp circuits. So, uh, are, they, are these 220? Yes. That's, yeah. That's 220. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason that they can charge it, and it's uh, and it's a 40 amp service. Yeah. Which is at 220 is a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like I said, the level three, you need a 100 amps at 220. That's like somebody's house. Box. Yeah. Is there a safety trip on it? Like you do on the, like a bathroom? They've got all kinds of stuff. They've got the, like in your bathroom where you GFIs. GFIs. They've got, they yes. have five prongs and it's kind of like your, your ground plug on the thing. 
that as soon as you start to pull it out, it disconnects one of them, and that immediately shuts all the power off. So there's no way you can get your fingers in it. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Further questions from council before you open up for public? Okay. This time, open up for public hearing on agenda item 10. Hearing on back to council. It's a great idea, I think. Um, it's great. I, and we have everything we need out there, Alan, right? Yeah, so we, we would have to pull some new wire because we, we just have, you know, the, the wire out there now for just regular plugs. But the conduit's in place. The, the boxes are in place. It wouldn't take much to, to get it all set up. What are we going to do about the charging or not charging? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, the charging or not charging for that fee? Because when I spoke with Courtney, obviously we had discussed we wouldn't do a charge to start. And I, my initial thought was we weren't, but if that's, I'll, I'll defer to to John Fergus on that one because he's the one that's really worked on this the most and probably knows it better than I do. Um, so if their recommendation is to start with the charge, then, then we'll probably come up with that and, okay. and implement it and see how that goes. And we can always change it. So, yeah. you know, but I think, I think his point is well taken with starting with nothing and then adding it later tends to make people mad. Mm -hmm. um, so if we do want to ever recoup some cost, you know, we might want to do that now. And I think before when we were starting to look at this, I was under the impression that just physically putting in that system of charging people would would be more would be harder um, than to just putting it out for free but it looks like this system that they picked doesn't have you know it has all that involved in so um, so I, I would probably defer to to their decision to go ahead and charge something at, at, at the onset I like just like you said where it would just pay for itself mm -hmm. in other words at least to start out as not we're not trying to make a profit out of it because I, I, I think what we're trying to do is, is a test case anyways we're just trying to see is this going to work does it have interest what's the deal from that point I don't think we ought to lose money on it but I don't think we ought to be out making money on it we should just do it as it is as a test we'll put it out there make sure we're covering our whatever the electric is that we're expending for it obviously if you compare it to Melbourne or somebody else we're probably going to be cheaper from from that point of view and like I said, to me, that's like a, you know, that's a zero sum cost. It doesn't really cost us anything. We're not making anything. We're not losing anything. We're trying to get interest to come use it, which is really what we're trying to do. I mean, we're not really trying to get, put this in as a money making item. I mean, we're really trying to do this as being green, providing service, entice, you know, customers and residents, people to use it. So I, I think at that point, and you're right, I would really, not want to start out and say it's free, then all of a sudden I show up three months later, now it cost me $32 to do it. When the last time it was free, it, I could see where people say, oh, what the heck happened, you know? I mean, that would be my thought on it. Thank you. I, Other discussion? I, I think it's a, it's a great place for a test facility. Um, you know, if you gave me the choice of going to the Schechter Center or the beach to go charge my car, I'd probably rather go to the beach. But it gets back to my concern, and I think we need to really research how, um, you know, we're going to handle vehicles that are parked there either too long or vehicles that are parked there that aren't electric and how we're going to handle it because I think we're going to see that happen. I mean, I've seen it. I was in Naples, and there was a car parked there. It wasn't even an electric vehicle, and it was parked there because there was no other parking places anywhere else and somebody parked there. And, you know, I want to make sure that we know what we're doing, how we're going to do it, mm -hmm. and we're able to address it to tow it away, if that's what it's going to take. Because we're, we're putting this facility there for a reason. And we're putting it in a popular place that people are going to use and go to the beach at. And I want to make sure that, you know, we have all our I's dotted and our T's crossed when we and it's not abused. And it's not abused. I mean, that's it's it's there for people to charge their car. I have a I have a plan going forward with several levels to it. So okay. I'm in, I'm in preparation on it. Okay. Good Thank deal. You. I think it's a great idea. Any hey. further 
The chief, the chief said that he'd come back or he'd bring a plan and it's in preparation. So when we get that prepared, we'll just add it to my report and just kind of give you an update of how much it's charging, how we're going to enforce it, you know, okay. stuff like that. Sounds great. Can I just add one thing? There is also pavement marking. So it will be marked it's very similar to a uh, handicap spot. There, it'll be it'll be painted and marked. There's an electric vehicle marking, so that there will be no question as to whether that is an open spot or is, that's for electric vehicles. It was the way it was in Naples. It was just like that. Right. Oh no, and, and uh, I can you know I can see it I can see it happening. You know, Pelican Park is full, and there's no parking spots available. Somebody's going to park there. But you know, it, Jeff and I will work it out to where that you know. It's well marked. It's it's marked enough that he has, you know, probable cause going in to do what he's got to do. The the plan that that I that I was referring to is really very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to start with the edu education aspect of it. If someone's parked that's not supposed to be there, we're just going to go find the person and tell them to move the car. And once people get that out, it's it's a small community, and they realize that if we're down on the beach going, hey, Mr. Smith, you got about five minutes, or we're towing your car. They'll, they'll get the word out. I don't think, I really don't think it's going to be a problem. I have talked to other, to other people and there are steps we can take that we have available should that become a problem. But in the interim, the, the, the plan is simply just we keep an eye on it and if there's people there that are not supposed to be there, we find them, tell them to move their car and, and really it's as simple as that. If it get, becomes such a problem that we need to have actual enforcement or tickets or anything like that, which I, I don't believe it will be, but if it does, then I, there's something we can do uh, later, and we can certainly implement it. But as of right now, that's really the, the plan. And who will uh, determine how much we charge? I think that's what Courtney just said, is she'll bring that to us, what the cost was, and she'll bring that back to us. We want to, if we're going to recoup our costs, we'll come up with that and put that back. We'll, we'll give you an update in my report when we get all that finalized. Okay. For, for the council's approval. Yeah. Councilwoman got just one one thing. When we were doing our research into this, the 15 cents a kilowatt hour was pretty much the average throughout the state. And seeing how we're paying 11 and a half cents, you know, we're we're really not making. I mean, it's not like we're here for profit, as you know, you folks were saying. Um, all it is 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 paying for the unit. And paying for the service fee, and, and that's the only thinking that we had. So, and the, the, I think Epcot might charge 25 cents a kilowatt hour, but that's Epcot. So, you know, yes. um, but 15 cents an, an hour is pretty much the going rate. Mel, John, um, Melbourne was charging 15 cents, right? 13 at the O'Gallon Library, and, and uh, Disney World is 48 cents. Oh, 48 cents. Ooh. Sorry. Wow. Well, I'll move that we approve the purchase of a charging station from the SEMA Connect for installation at Pelican Beach Park. Second. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Gott, second by Vice Mayor Montanero. Um, any further discussion? Councilman Lenore? Councilman Breimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Gott? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, John. And for sustainability committee now. Thank you very much for your work on it. And Courtney, you'll get back with us with yes. the rest of it. Okay, thank you. Moving on to agenda item 11, City Council proposed um, agenda for our October 7th meeting. If Again, look at it. If there's other items that you need on it or would like to have on it, please see Courtney on it. You're going you're gonna to put that resolution on there? Okay. Moving on to agenda item 12, um, adoption of minutes. I'll make a motion to adopt the uh, City Council workshop meeting minutes from September 2nd as submitted and also for the City Council regular meeting of September 2nd as submitted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Uh, any further discussion? Chairman Lenore? Lenore? Councilman Breimer? Yes. Councilman Goff? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, before we close, Courtney, to your staff and for everyone who worked hard on the uh, budget, thank you very much.
Uh, Andy, thank you. Very easy to read and appreciate the work. Any further business for council? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned. So you can turn in our old budgets. Yes. Turn in the old ones.